there's been some lonely ghosts floating around. So, Jessaline has captured some and placed them into jars for you to keep company. They glow in the dark to bring some light to your nights. On her journey, she also came across some lost pumpkins that are looking for a loving home this Halloween season. They are her gift to you. Only available on jessiev.com for limited time. Hey guys, it's Jessie V. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a unsolved missing persons case that occurred on Halloween. These were two girls who left school one day to walk around the town and never came back. It's definitely very eerie and unsettling and we're gonna get into it in just a moment. First, I just wanna give everyone a heads up that Halloween is only two weeks away. So if you would like any of our Halloween items on our website, like the ghost in a jar necklace, or one of the adopt a pumpkins now is your chance before they're gone before Halloween is over I have linked them down below every single adopt a pumpkin has a unique name So no one's gonna get the same one and they glow in the dark Which is so cool and these ghost in a jar necklaces glow so brightly at night. It's insane So yeah link down below I also want to talk about giving back for a moment for anyone who's coming to my meet-and-greet on October 19th So this coming Saturday because it is a free event if you can can please bring a non-perishable food item with you. We are partnering with the Orangeville Food Bank for this event and I would love to bring them a big basket full of food to tell them that you guys helped me with that. And what's pretty cool is that if you bring a non-perishable food item with you, you can trade it with one of our novelty items in our shop. So bring food and you get a gift for it. So maybe that's a bit more incentive. And if you want any more info about the meet and greet, I have linked it down below. All right guys, so now we're getting into more of a serious topic. I always feel so sad talking about disappearances that were never solved. That mystery is just so haunting. And especially the fact that this happened on Halloween and we're just two weeks away from that, it feels just really eerie. So let's get started. On Halloween, October 31st of 1969, Patricia Spencer, aged 16, and Pamela Hobley, aged 15, mysteriously vanished from their small hometown town of Oscada, Michigan, a community near Lake Huron. Their disappearance remains one of Michigan's oldest and most haunting unsolved cases, leaving the families and local community without answers for over 50 years. That is such a long time ago. My mom was actually born in 1969. So literally as long as my mom has lived, they have not solved this case. So let's first talk about the day these two girls disappeared. On that Halloween afternoon, both girls decided to skip their classes at their high school. And what was really strange to people is that they weren't close friends. People really never saw them hanging out together, really talking that often. So for the first time ever, they decided to hang out and leave school to go walk around the town. People remember watching them exit the school together. And they were last seen walking down River Road away from the school, heading towards downtown Oscada. And it was the the day of the high school's homecoming football game and Halloween parade, events that typically brought much of the town out to celebrate. However, neither of the girls ended up attending the game or the Halloween parade, nor did they return home that evening. So that's what's so baffling is that these girls usually like to attend fun events like this. They were excited about it, but they didn't show up. So let's talk about these girls individually so you kind of get an idea of who they were. Patricia was described as a quiet and somewhat rebellious teenager. At 16, she had a history of occasionally skipping school and was known to be very independent. However, she didn't have any prior record to running away and there was no evidence that suggested she was planning on running away from her family. She didn't take any of her belongings. She didn't leave any note. She didn't have like a fight with her siblings or parents. And it says she was last seen wearing a brown sweater and plaid skirt with a matching brown and plaid coat. Then we have Pamela Hobley. She was 15 and described as more reserved and well-behaved. Unlike Patricia, she didn't have a reputation for skipping school and there was no indication she was unhappy at home. She had expressed excitement to her parents about attending the football game and the Halloween parade. She even planned to go there with her boyfriend. But like we know, she never showed up and it says that she was last seen wearing a gray checkered skirt a matching vest and a long white coat. 
So let's get into the investigation of this case. When the girls didn't return home that evening, their families quickly grew concerned and both were reported missing the following day, November 1st of 1969. And the initial theories were that they must have run away. Because back in the 1960s, that wasn't very uncommon for young kids to do. This was a time when youth were sometimes known to leave home in search of independence or adventure. However, Neither of the girls took any money, took any clothes, took suitcases, took shoes, nothing. And there were no reports of sightings or contacts from either girl in the days, weeks, and years that followed. You'd figure that if they ran away to another town, another state, they would still be talking to people, making new friends, maybe calling their family to be like, hey, I'm safe, like, but there was none of that. And the fact that their disappearance occurred on Halloween added a layer of confusion to the investigation. Halloween is a time when many people wear disguises and the festive atmosphere might have made it easier for someone to abduct them unnoticed. The town would have been busy with homecoming festivities, Halloween costumes, trick-or-treating, which could have allowed the girls or their abductors to blend in without drawing suspicion. And over time, the case just grew cold. They were searching and searching but got no answers whatsoever. Extensive searches were conducted in and around the Oscada area, including combing through nearby woods, fields, and water sources, but no physical evidence of the girls was ever found. So all we have to go off of are theories. And so there are four theories that people have come up with. The first one is that they ran away, like we spoke about. The next theory is abduction or foul play. Many locals and investigators suspect that the girls were abducted by someone they knew or maybe by a stranger. Being a small town, there was little expectation of random crime, but Escada is located along a major highway, which could have allowed for a quick abduction by someone passing through. But despite this theory, no suspects were ever found, and there were no credible witnesses that saw the girls get into any vehicle. The next theory is serial killer involvement. Over the years, several serial killers were maybe thought of that could have done this. One of the more prominent theories involved John Norman Collins. He was a serial killer active in Michigan in the late 1960s who was responsible for the deaths of several young women. However, no direct link was ever proven with these girls and this man. Additionally, Michigan police have considered other known predators who were active in the region around the time of the girls' disappearance, but none have been definitively linked to their case. So yeah, there was a lot of bad people in Michigan at the time, but there was just no evidence, so they couldn't go off of that. And the last theory is accidental death. Patricia and Pamela may have died accidentally, perhaps falling victim to the harsh Michigan wilderness or drowning in a nearby body of water. However, the absence of any remains or belongings, despite thorough searches, makes this theory seem less likely. So I don't know, it's so unsettling. Unsolved cases just drive me mad. Like I wish I knew what happened. I'm sure their families wish they knew. If you guys have any thoughts, theories, definitely comment them down below. And if you like me talking about unsolved cases, missing persons cases, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. Maybe comment a case down below that you want me to cover. But I hope you found this video interesting. And don't forget if you would like any of our Halloween items before they sell out, before the Halloween season is over, I have linked them down below. But I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!